free in during Ram Truck Month. Where right now, well-qualified returning FCA lessees get a low mileage lease on the 2022 Ram 1500 Bighorn Quad Cab 4x4 for $279 a month for 24 months with $3,579 due at signing. Tax, title, license, extra, no security deposit required. Call 1-877-RAM-5722 for details. Requires dealer contribution at least through Chrysler Capital. Current lease must end by 4 2023 Extra charge for miles over 20000 Residency restrictions apply. Take delivery by 331 2022 all topics and securities mentioned on Stray Talk from the House are for informational purposes only and should not be used as investment advice. T. Anton Investment House does not offer tax or legal advice. Investments or investment strategies covered are not a recommendation or solicitation to buy or sell. The securities past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. This is Stray Talk from the House with certified financial planner Tracy Anton right here, 1310 WIBA. You can get to know Tracy and everyone at T. Anton Investment House on Online, the website tantoninvestmenthouse.com. That's T A N T O N investmenthouse.com. If you're looking for money management, portfolio management, Trace, we love to talk to you. She'd love to get to know you again. It all starts with a stop right at tantoninvestmenthouse.com. You also call the office right in Middleton, 608 501 1549. That's 608 501 1549. Tracy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Sean. How about you? I'm doing really well, and we're going to be getting an outlook for 2020. And, of course, we are now ah, into the new year, and, uh, of course, January's behind us. What reflections should we be keeping in mind for this new year? Well, I'm going to cheat a bit, Sean, mm -hmm. because uh, this information is coming from a 2022 outlook by the Capital Group. And a lot of people are familiar with the Capital Group because they manage the American funds. Mm. And, uh, you know, so I, I rely on some wise experts to tell me what I think I should reflect on. <laughs> so uh, one of the introductory letters comes from Rob Lovelace, and he is the vice chairman and president of the Capital Group. And basically, you know, he says that, you know, as we enter in 2022, it's clear that the market downturn of 2020 was short lived and completely related to COVID-19 outbreak. And in, in his opinion, that means that big upswing in equity prices since then is really just a continuation of the bull market we've seen over the past decade. And market leadership today is basically the same, he says, as it was in pre-pandemic. Pre -pandemic. So the largest gains are concentrated in the smaller smaller number of mostly US based internet related businesses. Really? So that's probably no surprise, but you know, this is coming from uh, a guy who manages a lot of money. It's really reassuring to hear that. So let's talk then about what it what this what this all means then for investors. Well, he goes on and talks about the continuation of the pre-pandemic trends means investors should keep in mind basically the risks that are happening right now in a long bull market. For example, we've seen pretty much an ongoing war between inflation and deflation uh, could determine how markets uh, are affected in the years ahead. And he talks about the risks are somewhat defined over the horizon that global economic growth is slowing, especially in China. And he talks about central bankers have started a slow reduction in monetary stimulus measures, as we've seen, and valuations are, you know, significantly higher across the board from stocks to bonds to real estate. And there was uh, something in the brochure that talked about, you know, based on prices relative to the company earnings, you know, you're looking at if you're looking at 15-year averages, the stock valuations are above their 15-year averages in almost every sector, whether you're looking at the S&P 500, the EFA index, which is international, emerging markets, or small caps. But there is a range still, and that's what I'd be encouraging people to say that, you know, even though stock prices are high, there is opportunity in different sectors, as well as stock selection is going to become probably more and more important. So probably more managed funds would be where you'd probably go versus the indexes. Talking this morning with certified financial planner Tracy Anton. Tracy comes to us from T. Anton Investment House, a fee-only fiduciary right in Middleton. The website, tantoninvestmenthouse.com. That's T-A-N-T-O-N, investmenthouse.com. Great resource to learn more about Tracy and her team. And again, a great opportunity there to schedule an appointment at a time and a date that is convenient to you. Again, the website, tantoninvestmenthouse.com. And the telephone number, 608-501-1549. That's 608-501-1549. 1549. So let's talk expectations, Tracy. What's uh, what's kind of the expectation then for the economy this year? 
Well, you know, Sean, the negative news often sells. So I was really um, happy to read in this article that uh, the analysts there at the Capital Group expect strong but slowing economic growth this year. So at least they're somewhat positive. Um, the world economy should expand at a pace of 4.9 percent, according to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF projections. Um, and again, why are they saying that is just because the ongoing pandemic recovery, right? This pent up demand that we all are experiencing and talking about and the extra money that we have, um, you know, people want to use. Um, and there's also been strong corporate earnings. So these things would, you know, hopefully yield to better um continued increase in, in stocks. Obviously, stocks have pulled back recently, um, but this, again, projecting into 2022, you know, will it be a good year? The IMF also calls for 5.2% growth in the U.S. and 4.3% in Europe. So that's interesting, a bit higher for us, of course, but still pretty good. Capital Group's um, economist Daryl Spence says U.S. economic growth should be solid in the range of 25 to 3%, but hampered by emerging COVID variants, warning stimulus, and inflationary headwinds. So, of course, he's talking more about GDP instead of um, stock growth. But still, that's, you know, growth. He's talking about how, how will the economy do and what will the stocks do in representation of how the economy does. And again, they go on and talk about China. And they say the world's second largest economy is expected to grow at an annualized rate of 5.6% in 2022. Capitals Group Asia economist Stefan Green says investors should prepare for a rough patch, though. China's economy is slowing and credit is tightening in the real estate sector. He predicts GDP growth will be much slower than the consensus forecast of 5.6. So, you know, you've got these divergence in um, projections, mm -hmm. right? you got the IMF that seems to be a little bit more positive, and then and American funds are saying, well, you know, uh, China could it, it is slowing and that that can hamper things. And I think everybody agrees, expect some volatility, especially especially with the political climate that's coming up with midterm elections. That's going to create some bumps um, and just, you know, inflationary headwinds as we still have the supply chain issues coming forward here. You mentioned that I word. Let's talk about kind of the deal. What's the deal there with inflation? Tracy? <laughs> yeah, what is the deal? <laughs> So for the past 30 years, investors really haven't worried much about inflation. And it pretty much changed, right, when COVID-related businesses um, caused prices, you know, for some consumer goods to rise deeply. So what's interesting is they made um, a point of talking about two kinds of inflation. They talked about the sticky inflation, which includes rent, insurance, and medical expenses. And then there's what they call flexible inflation, which affects items such as food, energy, and cars. So they gave this chart and they said flexible inflation has really increased. And you, and you saw this like big spike in this chart. And um, it, the number was like 18 percent for what they call flexible inflation. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, that is food, energy and cars. But sticky inflation was really closer to 3.4 percent. So one of the analysts um, actually is a fixed income portfolio manager, Richie Tuazan, who um, is at the American funds group, he said the upside risk is in the sticky components. So those are the categories that you want to drive that will drive inflation in 2022. So that's what investors need to keep their eye on. So what he's talking about is you need to keep your eye on will we'll rent insurance and medical expenses. That's the stuff that, you know, that will drive what inflation will look like. So they think American funds thinks that inflation, um, you know, should tamper, but they're not as positive as the Federal Reserve, you know, so it, it might take a while for these supply chain issues to work themselves out. So hopefully by the end of the year, we'll see that come to fruition. But inflation might be around here a little bit longer than what they originally had projected. So we'll get some details from Tracy in just a moment about how stocks may fare in a higher inflation or when we look at the inflation world, where that is, how stocks may fare. We'll get some of the details from Tracy on that. We'll do that and so much more. In the meantime, if you haven't been to the website, tantoninvestmenthouse.com, urge you to head on over there right now. You can learn more about Tracy. You can listen back to previous shows, podcasts. You can also schedule an appointment with Tracy at a time and a date that is convenient to you. All you got to do is head on over to tantoninvestmenthouse.com. That's T-A-N 
T-O-N-InvestmentHouse.com or pick up the phone and give Tracy a call at the office right in Middleton, 608-501-1549. That's 608-501-1549. We'll continue our conversation with certified financial planner Tracy Anton. We will do that next as Straight Talk from the House continues right here on 1310 WIBA. This is Straight Talk from the House with Certified Financial Planner Tracy Anton here on 1310 WIBA. Of course, T. Anton Investment House, a fee-only fiduciary. You can learn more about T. Anton Investment House online, the website tantoninvestmenthouse.com. Great resource to learn more about Tracy and the team. Also great opportunity there to schedule an appointment at a time and a date that is convenient to you. Again, the website tantoninvestmenthouse.com. The telephone number is 608-501-1549. That's 608-501-1549. Getting an outlook for 2022 now that we're into the new year. And we left off talking about inflation. And Tracy, let's get a look at the outlook for 2022 yeah. with with inflation. What are, what's expected there? Yeah, inflation projections are at about three and a half percent for 2022 and 2.7 for 2023, according to the International Monetary Fund. And of course, that's good because if we look at what inflation has been, 6.6 6, I think was the number that I saw from October 2020 to October 2021. So those are you know coming down quite good. If that's the case, hopefully the projections are right. Um, Capital Group expects inflation to eventually return to normal levels, as I mentioned before. They also think it's a good idea to guard against the threat of sustained higher prices by investing in things like treasury in inflation protected securities. Those are, are um, tips, they're called, treasury inflation protected securities. Those are bonds um, and dividend paying stocks and companies with pricing power. And I would agree with all those suggestions. Uh, those strategies may not fully guard, they say, investors from inflation, but they'll help, right? I mean, everything that helps in the portfolio. And um, I, I think hopefully that inflation will be you know, somewhat tamed as we get the supply chains um, behind us. But at the same time, you know, it is real and it's it's, it's pretty much here, you know, much more than we're, we've, we've been before. But nothing like the 1970s. Okay. Can I just say that? <laughs> nothing like the 1970s. That is an important caveat here. And, and let's talk then, too, while we're discussing inflation. It's here. What should we then, as you mentioned, kind of a little tip there about things to keep in mind. What are some of the other things uh, we should keep in mind that will help us kind of get through with this inflation? Yeah, Sean, I think inflation, people forget that it can be healthy for companies. It allows them to raise prices and enhance profitability that they might not have been able to do in recent years. So inflation particularly helps banks and commodity-linked companies that struggle in a low inflationary environment. So um, the second thing I would say is that, you know, higher inflation um, so stocks and bonds actually have generally proven to have solid returns. So there was this really cool chart again. I wish I could show it to you. Maybe we need to get a video on this or something. But <laughs> stocks really and bonds have done pretty well to low to moderate to even a bit higher inflation levels. Uh, it, it, it Mostly the extremes when inflation is above 6% or if it below 0% that assets had a harder time struggling. You know, stocks and do as well, obviously. So, you know, I was looking at this chart and basically the average rate of return for stocks and bonds at different inflation rates from 1970 to 2021. And it showed the rate of return in stocks to be negative 6.5% when inflation was below 0%. And bonds were like 6.8% when inflation was low. So I guess that makes sense. So when inflation was below zero, you had bonds doing really well and stocks not doing well on average, right? They, they returned negative. But when inflation was averaged at zero to 2%, stocks on average had positive returns of 117 And bonds actually did pretty well at 5% as well. Um, when inflation was 2 to 3%, stocks returns on average were 14.2%. And bond returns were 4%. 0.2%, so very good on both things. And then when inflation was 3 to 4%, stocks, again, average returns were about 108 and bonds were 66 .6. And when inflation was 4 to 6%, once again, stock returns were 8.6% and bonds averaged 4.3%. And again, this, these, this information is from 1970 to 2021. So all this suggests that when, you know, when stock, when inflation is, you know, moderate to even a bit high, I mean, inflation 
inflation at four to six percent. Some people would say it's kind of high, mm -hmm. right? I would. Mm -hmm. um, stocks still did well at 8.6 and bonds 4.3. But when inflation was over six percent, that's when stock returns on average were um, were negative 3.7 and bond returns were negative at 4.3. So. It's something to think about. You know, we really worry about inflation, but stocks can do well in inflation. And according to this, bonds as well. I think bonds will struggle here, but, you know, it depends on what kind of bond we're talking about as well. Interesting. So, Tracy, stocks have done well with high inflation. What more can you then tell us when it comes to uh, preparing for 2022? Well, Sean, persistent periods of high inflation, again, are rare. In other words, this is unlikely going to be the repeat of the 1970s when you saw inflation at double digit numbers around 15%. You know, back in the 1970s, we had the two oil shocks, and there really wasn't a thing called the Federal Reserve. The first Federal Reserve chair was 1979, Paul Volcker. So, you know, we now have the ability if, first of all, this isn't the same because that had to do with price shocks and this is supply chain issues that are likely to you know work itself out. But also, we also didn't have the Fed that was would be able to step in and that's what they're doing and that's what they will do, right? They're talking about increasing rates in March and June. So, um, yeah, I, just, I wouldn't worry too much about it, you know. Um, but I would also say, you know, it's a good time to just make sure that you know you've got a balanced portfolio like we always talk about and again I this article was talking about how the importance of bottom-up security selection and some people might say well that's pretty biased true because it is the American funds printing it however I think that there is um, reason to say you know you'd like to know what what stocks you have in the portfolio and are they overly inflated at this point I think there is credence to that you know if we look at stock valuations, they are above their 15-year averages. And so most classes of stocks and bonds have, are on the pricier side. So anyway, those can be good because we've done well, right? Um, but I still think there is, and this article is talking about this too, there's still opportunity for stock selection. There's still good stocks out there. And again, um, there's a bunch, there's a there's a built-up demand due to this pandemic that hopefully this year will do well, you know, not as well. We can't expect double-digit returns, and we're seeing that as, the, as stocks have pulled back. Now, remind I want to remind the listeners too, you know, pullbacks of 10% happen once a year, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And so- it's not that big a deal. Like, you know, don't throw the baby out because it's stocks all over the long run have done well. And hopefully no one's panicking. No one's panicking at my shop. I'm hopefully nobody's panicking that are listening to this either. You know, <laughs> stocks over the long run have done well. They're they're mostly talking about more muted returns than a big correction. Um, so that's also something to think about. But I think when we look at it going forward, most equity markets around the world have been strong as we come out of this pandemic. And again, this this demand that's built up, I think, should should help. And the supply chain issues resolving themselves will also help. Um, and, you know, I would just say um, a long term perspective is what we need. Really important guidance there this morning. Talk a little bit about bonds with Tracy in just a moment. You may be hearing us talk this morning. Go say, wait, what about bonds? We'll find out the details from Tracy. We'll do that next. <laughs> in the meantime, check out the website, tantoninvestmenthouse.com. That's T-A-N-T-O-N, investmenthouse.com. Great website. You can also schedule an appointment right there at a time and a date that is convenient to you. Again, the website, tantoninvestmenthouse.com. Or you can set up an appointment the old-fashioned way over the phone, 608-501-1549. That's 608 501 1549. But again, even easier, just go online, tantoninvestmenthouse.com. We'll get the details on those bonds. We will do that next as Straight Talk from the House continues right here on 1310 WIBA. This is Straight Talk from the House with Certified Financial Planner Tracy Anton right here on 1310 WIBA. Looking ahead as we're into 2022 and looking at the year that uh, things that uh, are on the horizon, things that we might expect, things kind of uh, uh, really developing and some really interesting conversation. If you missed any part of today's program, you can always listen back not only at WIBA.com, but you can also head on over to TAntoninvestmenthouse.com. While you're there, you can schedule an appointment at a time and a date that is convenient to you. Again, the website tantoninvestmenthouse.com the telephone number for the office right in Middleton 608 501 1549 that's 608 501 1549 so Tracy 
what about bonds? Well, Sean, credit spreads are as tight as they've been in 30 years, so corporate bond market valuations have soared as investors pursue the yield, and they're getting people are getting more and more aggressive with what they're choosing. Um, you know, we've got growth slowing and cheap value stocks, um, and bonds are hard to come by. So, so, again, security selection is probably really more and more important as we go forward. Um, but there is opportunity, and as I said before, you know, it's not that bonds won't do well in a rising rate environment because if we look back, you know, and we take the rising rate environment in many, many years, um, I'm looking at and saying, okay, bonds can still do well in a rising rate environment. And there's a big chart here that I can't explain all, but it, it does look like bonds can do well. And, you know, if you're searching for more yield, you've got high quality corporate yields that are at 4.7%. Emerging market debt, if you want to be more risky, would be 5.2 and an investment grade corporates are at 2.3. I would also say if you're looking for yield, what was really interesting, and I love seeing this, is that um, you have opportunities not only in the bonds, actually munis, you also have opportunities there. I wanted to say that as well, because the munis, if you're in high tax um, equivalents, it's harder to find the better deals in munis because they've gone up so much, but that there is still opportunity there, especially for people in a taxable account. That's where you'd want to put those. And if you have higher income, that would be a good opportunity there. And then also the dividend paying stocks. Dividends are staging a comeback of global proportions, this article was talking about. So businesses across sectors and borders are raising their dividends. And it gave um, lots of examples in here from United Health, TD Bank, Broadcom, JP Morgan, Comcast, you know, and then it went um, international to Zurich and China Gas, Samsung, I won't go on and on, but Taiwan Semiconductors, a lot of companies are switching from paying zero to um, increasing their dividends, and they're calling them dividend heroes now. <laughs> and so, you know, it's it's a good opportunity to look at dividend-paying stocks, and where else can we go, right? I mean, we need we need yield if we're um, a retiree. You had mentioned earlier, you used a term that I don't think I've, I've heard before, which is uh, to seek experience exposure to pricing power. What what exactly is that? Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Mm -hmm. So inflation, Sean, is kind of disturbing, right, mm -hmm. to investors because it can erase company profits and eventually investor returns. But there are, are ways really to fight it. Companies with pricing power can help safeguard their profit margins by passing those costs along to you and me, mm -hmm. their customers, right? So for example, look at Netflix. So a series of hits like Squid Game. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Oh, yes. I'm not, but are you? Yes. Do you know that? Much. Okay. Yes, great. You do? Yeah, it was really good, Tracy. It was really, really good. good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get I got to get with the program. Anyway, the seemingly unlimited viewer demand has enabled the streaming giant to increase subscription fees four times over the past 10 years. So talk about pricing power, right? Yeah. The ability to increase what they're because people love it. They're they're p producing a high quality product and they're able to raise their rates, right? Companies with pricing power potential include consumer businesses with strong brand recognition like beverages like Keurig, Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, and many companies. Uh, these companies have favorably supply and demand dynamics. Other examples, Sean, are semiconductors and chip equipment makers. Oh my goodness, don't we need them? We would pay anything, right? Yes. They can increase their prices, we'll still buy. Businesses that provide essential services also, like healthcare giants, Pfizer, and United Health Group. These companies have what they call pricing power. That is amazing. So let's, um, as we're talking this week about the outlook for 2022 with certified financial planner Tracy Anton, let's um, let's just kind of get your overview and kind of some closing summarizations for, for the outlook of 2022, Tracy. Yeah, so again, according to the Capital Group, the economy, economic recovery is expected to continue through 2022. However, the easy gains that we've had in growth from the economic rebounding activities are kind of likely behind us. And then we looked at what Vanguard said, um, and of course, they're kind of negative a little bit with expected returns to be about 5% over the next decade. Now, these again are projections, and we have to keep that in consideration. Um, and but the good news, I think, of this article was that everyone kind of agrees inflation is expected to cool in 2022, and also that there is still opportunity out there in the stocks 
And um, we've got kind of the comeback of dividend paying stocks and that in an inflationary time that we are in, stocks and bonds can both do well and have done well. If you go back, um, if we start, if we study from 1970 to 2021, we've seen that stocks can do well in an inflationary time. Really great, important stuff. Uh, any political anything in there or are we uh, we good with good with that? I think we're good with that. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll keep the we'll leave the politics for a different show for a different program. She is certified <laughs> financial planner Tracy Anton right here at thirteen ten W I B A. The website's T Anton Investment House.com. That's T A N T O N Investment House.com. If you're looking for money management, portfolio management, Tracy would love to get to know you. She would love to work with you. It all starts with a stop at T Anton Investment House.com. You can also pick up the phone, give Tracy a call, 608 608- Five zero one fifteen forty nine. That's six zero eight five zero one fifteen forty nine. Tracy, it's been fun as always. You have a fantastic day. Thanks, Sean. You too. Adyen is the payments platform made for today, tomorrow, and whatever comes next. With Adyen's single solution, it's simple to accept all kinds of payments in app, online, in store, touch free, and beyond. And it seamlessly adapts with your business. So keep your customers happy and your business growing with Adyen. Visit adyen.com to learn more. That's A-D-Y-E-N dot com.